on World News Tonight. Last chance. Malaysia's top court has upheld ex-Prime Minister Najib Razak's conviction on the infamous 1MDB scandal. A 12-year jail sentence has been handed down to the disgraced Prime Minister. Unforgiving rains. The Dallas region in the United States gets half a year's quantity of rain in one day. Tonight, we look at the latest developments in this catastrophic weather condition. Inflation stress. The global rise in commodity prices are affecting the weakest portions of society. Tonight, we look at the impact on the European consumer market. And the great unknown. China launched its newest satellite to outer space, adding awe to the already fast popularized space race. This is Ada Derano World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Danilu Witanawasam. Good evening, thank you for joining us on World News. We start off today's coverage with some breaking news. Malaysia's top court has upheld former Prime Minister Najib Razak's conviction and 12-year jail sentence for corruption in the 1MDB financial scandal. Prosecutors have said some 4.5 billion US dollars was stolen from 1MDB state fund, which was co-founded in 2009 when Najib was the Prime Minister. Najib's loss in his final appeal means he will have to begin serving his sentence immediately, becoming the first former Prime Minister in Malaysia to be jailed. The former Prime Minister has been on bail since 2018, pending the appeal. A lower court in July 2020 found Najib guilty of abuse of power, money laundering and criminal breach of trust over the transfer of 10.1 million US dollars from SRC International, a former unit of 1MDB, to his personal bank account. Over some disturbing news in the United States, millions of Americans are under flood warnings after heavy rain this weekend in a large portion of the south and southwestern US were under high waters submerging vehicles in Texas and sweeping hikers in Arizona off their feet. Government meteorologists issued flood warnings for more than 13 million people after torrential rain created life-threatening conditions in regions including Northeast Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas and New Mexico. The record rainfall in cities like Dallas triggered hundreds of emergency rescues across the region. Before sunrise, commuters were swimming from their cars to reach higher ground. Firefighters pulling drivers to safety as a wave of murky flood water washed over roads like Interstate 30. How scared was I? Baby, I'm all drowned in this car. I had to kick this dough up just to get out the car. The harrowing rescues came as fast as the water did. Just outside Dallas, more than 13 inches of rain in 12 hours. The one in 1,000 year rain event snapping the city's second longest dry streak with almost half a year's average rainfall in just hours. We couldn't stop it. We put towels down barriers yeah, and it just bags, overtook things. our entire living room. From drought to deluge, tonight the Southwest is facing a wave of problems after too much water too fast. Amid scenes like these in New Mexico, rapid rainfall also washed out a road leading to Carlsbad Caverns. Wow, look at it go across the road, man. Some 200 visitors were trapped there over the weekend. They're going to put them on the back of the truck. After children were rescued from a school bus in Arizona, today the city of Duncan is facing mass evacuations. Over the border in Utah, where this was the scene at Zion National Park, the search is underway for Gentile Agniatri, who was washed away with this hiker before he was miraculously rescued. I was doing everything I could to just, you know, rip him out. Thank God there was a couple other people there to kind of grab me. Um, that came after him. But for now, there remains no sign of the 29-year-old. Even after three days, we, we are hopeful that we're going to find her. That's, that's the hope. I, we still have it in us. So Tonight, record rain across the Southwest, and now the heartbreak and misery to match it. Staying in the United States, lawyers for Donald Trump have asked a federal judge to prevent the FBI from continuing to review documents recovered earlier this month from the former U.S. President's Florida home until a neutral special master is appointed to inspect the records. The request was included in a court filing yesterday, the first by Trump's legal team since the search of the mar lago on August 8th that takes broad aim at the FBI investigation into the discovery of classified records from the estate. 
Former President Donald Trump on Monday asked a federal court to temporarily block the FBI from reviewing the materials it seized on August 8th from his Florida home until a special master can be appointed to oversee the review. Trump's court motion was filed in a federal court in West Palm Beach, Florida. It demanded that the U.S. Justice Department provide him with a more detailed property receipt outlining the items the FBI seized from his Mar-a-Lago home during its August 8th search and asked investigators to return any items outside the scope of the search warrant. The filing says politics cannot be allowed to impact the administration of justice. Law enforcement is a shield that protects Americans. It cannot be used as a weapon for political purposes. His request was assigned to U.S. District Judge Eileen M. Cannon, whom Trump appointed to the bench. Magistrate Judge Bruce Reinhart, the judge who approved the warrant, is weighing whether to require the Justice Department to release a redacted copy of the affidavit laying out the evidence for why there was probable cause to search Trump's home. The Justice Department at a court hearing last week opposed its release, saying it would provide people with a roadmap of its investigation and possibly chill witness cooperation. The Justice Department has until noon on Thursday to provide the judge a redacted copy of the document that he could potentially release to the public. The search, which was approved by Reinhardt on August 5th, is part of a federal investigation into whether Trump illegally removed documents when he left office in January 2021. During its search, the FBI seized 11 sets of classified materials, some of which were labeled top secret, the highest level of classification. Russia has accused Ukrainian special services of carrying out a car bombing that killed Daria Dugina, the daughter of an influential Russian ultra-nationalist who has backed Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. Tonight, Russia's top intelligence agency now blaming Ukrainian spies for the fiery car bomb explosion near Moscow that killed the daughter of a close Putin ally, Alexander Dugin. This video appears to show him upset at the scene. His 29-year-old daughter, Daria, was in the car when the explosive went off. Dugan, an ultra-nationalist writer who some in the West call Putin's brain, is an outspoken supporter of Russia's invasion and is also blaming Ukraine. President Putin called the death a vile, cruel crime in a letter to the Dugan family. Mm -hmm. Russian intelligence now claiming a Ukrainian spy shadowed Daria Dugina for weeks, planted the bomb, then fled the country. An accusation Ukraine strongly denies. But tonight, Ukrainians on edge, counting down to Wednesday's six-month anniversary of the war. President Zelensky already warning a particularly nasty attack by Russia is a possibility. Over the latest in the war in Ukraine, the European Union will discuss launching a major training program for Ukrainian forces in neighboring countries. Military equipment and intelligence data provided by the United States and Western Europe have helped Ukrainian forces to slow but not stall the advancement of Russian forces in eastern Ukraine and along the Black Sea coast. The European Union says it could increase its military involvement in Ukraine's war effort. The 27 member states are considering combat training for Ukrainian soldiers in a major mission that, if it goes ahead, would take place in neighbouring countries. EU Foreign Affairs Chief Joseph Boré justified its deliberations. It seems reasonable that a war that lasts and seems to be going to last should require an effort, not only in terms of equipment supplies, but also in terms of training and for the organization of the army. And this is what is being discussed among the member states and will be discussed politically next week, next Monday in Prague, within the Council of Defense Ministers, and I hope that it will be approved. Meanwhile, as the war rumbles on, President Vladimir Putin chose National Flag Day to hail Russia's military glory and upholding of traditional values. The national flag, like the unfading red banner of victory, serves to educate the younger generation about the values of patriotism, citizenship and responsibility for the future of the motherland. Back in Ukraine, there is no respite. Kyiv acknowledged on Monday that nearly 9,000 soldiers have been killed since the start of the conflict. 
and despite pleas from the international community, bombs have fallen again near the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. A rising inflation in Europe, which jumped to 8.9% in July of 2022, the highest in 25 years, will hurt the profitability of general insurers over the next two years. Germany's 10-year bond yield has hit a new four-and-a-half-week high. It follows fresh concern that disruption to European gas supplies will keep energy prices elevated, ensuring inflation stays high across the continent. The European Commissioner for Eternal Market tweeted that he strongly advises everyone to limit the use of their air conditioner this summer. French supermarket retailer Carrefour is freezing prices on 100 everyday products. Small businesses are already making their own sacrifices. Before we used to bake bread five times a day, but now we've cut back to three. We have organized ourselves differently. This means that special breads are baked with the baguettes instead of on their own. But tightening the energy belt is not everyone's cup of tea. I think it's abusive. We do what we want at home. We pay for gas, electricity. We'll be cold. We'll put blankets on. We can always put on more jumpers, socks, mittens if we have to. In the UK, some electricity bills have nearly tripled in one year. A movement of people refusing to pay has gained momentum. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, along with multiple countries' permanent representatives to the UN, called on countries around the world to reach a consensus and make due contributions to common security. A UN Security Council briefing was held on promoting common security through dialogue and cooperation. The briefing was hosted by China, attended by the UN Secretary General Guterres and representatives from multiple countries. While addressing the briefing, Guterres stressed the need to reforge a global consensus around the cooperation required to ensure collective security. China's permanent representative to the UN, Zhang Jun, said at the press briefing that the global security initiative proposed by Chinese President Xi Jinping is the answer given by China to promote the realization of common security. In response to the current national security dilemma, permanent representative of the Russian Federation to the United Nations, Vasily Nebenzia, said at the briefing that since the Cold War, Western countries' attempts to maintain their hegemony have led to the global turmoil today. Over to Australia now. In advice given to the current government, the Solicitor General in Australia had said that former Prime Minister Scott Morrison's actions were legal, but his decision to keep them secret from the public and his own colleagues was inconsistent with conventions. Ex-Prime Minister Morrison has defended the steps as necessary in extraordinary times. After a bombshell report in Australia that ex-leader Scott Morrison had been appointed to several government ministries in secret, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese shared the advice of top legal counsel on Tuesday. The Solicitor General has concluded that Mr Morrison was validly appointed by the Governor General to administer uh, the various departments. The advice, though, is, I think, a very clear uh, clear um, criticism and critique of the implications that are there for our democratic system of government of what happened under the former Morrison government. Paragraph 44 and 46 go to uh, the principle of responsible government being, to quote uh, the Solicitor General, fundamentally undermined by the former government's actions. The Solicitor General is the nation's second highest legal officer. In explaining how he believed Morrison undermined responsible government, he also wrote, quote, that is because it is impossible for Parliament and the public to hold ministers accountable for the proper administration of particular departments if the identity of the ministers who had been appointed to administer those departments is not publicized. Morrison's office did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Since the report came out, Morrison, who lost the general election in May, has faced a wave of criticism from the Labour government as well as his own Liberal Party. Last week, he said that the time of the global health crisis was an extraordinary one and he secretly took on the ministries because he felt responsibility for the nation was his alone. 
A billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk is seeking documents from Twitter co-founder Jack Dorsey as the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX pursues his legal fight to walk away from his $44 billion US dollar deal for the social media company. Tesla's Elon Musk has subpoenaed Jack Dorsey ahead of Musk's court battle over Twitter, according to a court filing. Musk wants to walk away from his $44 billion deal to buy the tech company. Now he's seeking documents from Dorsey, a Twitter co-founder who is CEO of the payments processing company Block, which changed its name from Square last year. Dorsey resigned as Twitter's chief executive last November and left its board in May. According to a copy of the subpoena, Dorsey was asked for documents and communications about Musk's April agreement to buy the company and about spam accounts on the platform. It's specifically asking about documents on Twitter's use of MDAU, a measure of active users on its platform. Musk has alleged Twitter withheld the number of fake accounts in its regulatory filings, which Musk said is part of what he used to value the company. Twitter has denied Musk's spam allegations and declined to comment on the subpoena. Musk told Twitter he was ending the deal in July. The two sides have since sued each other, and Twitter has asked the Delaware judge to order Musk to close the deal, with a trial set to start in mid-October. Dorsey had tweeted support of Musk's buyout offer in April, and the two men have agreed on the need for more transparency for Twitter's algorithm and allowing users more control over the content they see. Now, Kenya's defeated presidential candidate Raila Odinga filed a petition to the country's top court yesterday challenging the result of the August 9th elections that handed victory to his rival, William Ruto. Odinga, a veteran opposition leader who ran with the backing of President Uhuru Kenyatta and the ruling party has rejected the outcome of the poll, branding it a travesty. Their placards demand justice. Raila Odinga's supporters are not going down without a fight. And neither is Odinga himself. On Monday, he announced that he will challenge the results of this month's presidential election, delivering his appeal in person at the Supreme Court. He and his supporters are refusing to accept Deputy President William Ruto as their new president. Kenyans, we want Raila Amolo Odinga to be our president. We vote for election peacefully, but Chubukati has done a very wrong thing because Raila Amolo Dinga is the one who win the election. The chairman of the election commission declared Ruto as president last week, but four out of seven election commissioners say that the tallying of results had not been transparent. The commission's chairperson has conducted the election as though he is the national returning officer, a non-existent role and his role in declaring results that were not approved by plenary by all seven commissioners renders the results unconstitutional. The Supreme Court has 14 days to rule on Odinga's challenge. If the results are overturned, a new election must be held within two months. Since 2002, all election results have been contested in Kenya, and in 2007, Odinga rejected the verdict of the ballot box leading to violent clashes which left over a thousand people dead. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Anthony Fauci will step down as the head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and chief medical advisor to President Joe Biden. Dr. Fauci, who served as the director of the NIAID, for 38 years, said he would leave both positions in December to pursue the next chapter of his career. As a part of its restructuring, Ford said it will cut a total of 3,000 salaried and contract jobs, mostly in North America and India. Ford's cost-cutting actions are the latest in a series of efforts by companies to reduce expenses and employee headcount amid fears of a potential recession. China has turned to cloud seeding in an attempt to induce rainfall as it struggles with one of the worst droughts in decades. A two-month-long heat wave has left authorities scrambling to provide water for crops and caused parts of the Yangtze River and tributaries to dry up. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news from around the globe. If you have missed any of the stories we had tonight, you can rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash other than English. As we leave you tonight, we take a look at the newest feat in, space, in the space race. China successfully launched a new satellite into space, 
from Xicheng Satellite Launch Center in southwest China, Sichuan Province. The Xuanjing-16 satellite developed by the Chinese Academy of Sciences was launched by a Quasar carrier rocket and entered the planned orbit successfully. The satellite will mainly be used for scientific experiments and verification of new technologies. Thank you for joining us. Have a great night.